Welcome to this uh, example of how to solve an oblique uh, collision problem, but we're only going to solve a very special case. And I'm going to review this at the end, but the, this is the special case. It must meet the three conditions. One, the masses of the target and the shooter must be equal. So equal masses. Two, the collision must be elastic. In other words, kinetic energy must be conserved. And three, the target must be stationary. So the initial velocity of the target has to be zero. So what follows um, is correct if all three of those conditions are met. I'm assuming essentially that no one is going to ask you to solve a more complicated oblique collision problem in a beginning physics class and if I'm wrong then you are in a very special beginning physics class and it's highly unlikely you are watching this video okay you're probably making them so let's let's continue and you'll see what uh, simplifications are possible because of these three assumptions. And without these assumptions, the math is simply horrific. So that's why we're just not going to go there. All right, so let's begin with the conservation. It's elastic, so the kinetic energy is conserved. Oops. Okay, so here's the situation. We have our stationary target which is two kilograms and actually it doesn't matter uh, what the masses of the shooter and the uh, target are they're they're going to cancel which is why it's important that they're equal so I'll just put MT and its initial velocity is zero okay so along comes the shooter velocity MS but MS equals MT So I'll just continue to write ms and mt for now, uh, but eventually we'll call, uh, we'll take advantage of the fact that they're equal, and we'll see that they cancel out. So what's going to happen is the shooter's coming along at a velocity of four meters per second. So da -da 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 -da, click, and so after the collision. The target uh, direction is 30 degrees down. So, in other words, the target is going to head along this line, 30 degrees. So, that's where the target's going. The shooter is going to head along this line. And the first thing I'm going to establish is that the shooter's going up here. I'm going to establish that this is a 90 degree angle. Okay, so that's these three conditions uh, create uh, this situation. So how does that work? Well, let's um, let's start by looking at what's going on. Let's see, I said that kinetic energy is conserved, but the first thing I'm going to draw is uh, a vector diagram based on the conservation of momentum. So momentum is conserved. Now remember, in every interaction momentum is conserved. You can always uh, pull that out of the hat. So the initial momentum is all in the shooter heading to the right. So it's the mass of the shooter times its velocity, which is just, and again, I'm just going to write, uh, I'm just going to keep going with formulas. So I don't even know why I wrote that down. Okay, we'll just, because I want you to see how the cancellation works. And then uh, after the collision, so now we'll draw a picture, we've got the shooter moving in this direction at its post-collision velocity, and it has a mass of ms. And we have the target moving in this direction at its 
post-collision velocity having a mass of mt. So if we draw the, um, the vector diagram for momentum, what do we have? Well, the total momentum before and after is the same. So that means that the uh, momentum of the shooter, and I'm probably going to get the scale all wrong here, but anyway. So the momentum of the shooter, which is the mass of the shooter times its velocity, plus, vectorially speaking, the momentum of the target, which is the mass of the target, times its velocity. The vector sum of those is the all the momentum in the system, which is just the mass of the shooter times the velocity of the shooter. And that was all present before the collision. And that was all heading directly to the right. So that's the initial momentum. So that vector is here. So the vector sum of these two guys, okay, pardon my poor drawing, is that the mass of the shooter times the initial velocity of the shooter. Now the first thing we're going to notice uh, mathematically is this. I am going to uh, make a copy of this vector, which of course copies up here, and this is a parallelogram, so this vector can be drawn up here. It's the mass of the target times the velocity of the target. Okay, so I want us to focus our attention on this uh, on this triangle. So I'm just going to redraw it. So we've got the mass of the shooter times the velocity of the shooter, that momentum. Mass of the target, velocity of the target, that momentum, and the vector sum is the mass of the shooter times the initial velocity of the shooter directed to the right. Now, here's where we start to use our conditions. We know these masses are all the same. Therefore, we can just cancel them. Um, in other words, we will just be scaling, let's suppose they're all two, which they are in the problem. If they're all two, scaling simply means dividing everything by two. So we'll just shrink this triangle so it's half the size. But it's still the same triangle. It's a similar triangle. The angles and relationships between the sides are all the same. So we'll just make those masses disappear. Okay. So now we have a situation where the velocities, the vector sum of the velocities after the collision is equal to the vector sum of the velocity of the shooter before the collision. So we've got a triangle. So this, the, basically the momentum conservation has given us a velocity vector triangle. Okay, now we're going to pull out the next condition that this uh, Condi uh, that this collision is elastic. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the kinetic energy before, which is one half mass of the shooter, velocity of the shooter squared, equals the kinetic energy after, which is the sum of the kinetic energies of the two uh, balls. So it's the mass of the target times its velocity squared plus one half mass of the shooter times its velocity squared. So these got this is equal to this. Now, now we're going to pull out of the hat that first of all, let me just write equals. I'll just copy this over here. Whoops, wrong shape. V. There we go. Okay, so I've just copied this over here. All right, every uh, term is a factor of a half, so it can be canceled out. 
all these masses are equal, the same value, so they can be cancelled out. So I end up with the velocity of the target squared plus the velocity of the shooter squared is equal to the initial velocity of the shooter squared. These are the post-collision velocities and this is the velocity of the shooter before the collision. Okay, so now we're going to put these two things together. From the momentum diagram, we've got a triangle where the velocities are related like this. From the conservation of kinetic energy assumption, we've got this relationship between the sides of the triangle. And hopefully you're looking at that and screaming Pythagoras. Where we have the hypotenuse here and we have the two legs here. Okay, so we're going to leap to the conclusion that this is a right angle triangle. In other words, there's a right angle here, which is up here and in other places. Now, even here, there's a subtlety that can be missed. Pythagoras' theorem actually says if you have a right angle triangle, then the sum of the squares of the sides are related like that. What we're doing is we're looking at the converse. We're saying, We've got a triangle, and we know that the sum of the squares of the sides are related this way. Therefore, we're concluding it's a right angle triangle. That's not the same as Pythagoras' theorem the way we usually use it. This is the converse, and it needs to be proven, and I'm going to spare you. I'm not going to prove the converse. I'm just going to uh, tell you the converse is true. And so we're legitimately concluding that this is a right angle triangle. And that's very important. So all right, let's pull the 30 degrees into this triangle. So this 30 degrees is the uh, direction that the shooter went after, the, sorry, the target went after it was struck. So that's the 30 degrees right here. And so because this is a parallelogram, uh, these two sides are parallel, this is a transversal cutting the two sides, so by some elementary geometry, that's 30 degrees. So if we move, move down to here, this angle is our 30 degree angle, and therefore this one is 60. But I'll try to use the 30 degree angle in what follows. Okay, so we can now um, pull out some relationships to where we can actually uh, solve our problem. So from here, it's pretty easy. He said, trying to move things around. Uh, I lost something. Come back. Okay, we're good. So here it's, from here, it's pretty easy. Vs, the velocity of the shooter, we know. And so we can see from the triangle that uh, Vs, sorry, the velocity of the shooter after uh, over the velocity of the shooter before is the sine of 30 degrees. So the post-collision shooter, the velocity, divided by the initial uh, velocity of the shooter is the sine of 30 degrees, or in other words, the post-collision velocity is the initial velocity of the shooter times the sine of 30. And similarly, the velocity of the target after the collision over the initial velocity of the shooter is the cosine of 30. So we have the velocity of the target is the initial velocity of the shooter times the cos of 30. So we can now put our numbers in. Um, the, in, the, in this problem, the, velocity, the initial velocity of the shooter was 4. So we have 4 and the sine of 30 is a half. 
So the velocity of the shooter after the collision is 2 meters per second. And here it's the cos of 30 is about 0.866. And so this is about, what, 3.46 or something for uh, something like that. Not quite sure. Something like that. All right. So that's the velocity of the target after the collision. What I recommend that you do is if you suspect you're going to have to do, deal with a problem like this, that you memorize the three conditions. And if you're satisfied those conditions hold in your problem, then just memorize the solution. Okay, unless you like sort of playing around with the diagrams there. So all you have to do is this angle here has to be the angle that the target uh, assumes after the collision. So that's the angle of the target. The def okay, as in our diagram there. So if you can get your problem or your organized uh, in this fashion, then you can quickly come up with a solution. Put it on a flashcard five minutes before the exam, memorize it, right? And there you go. But hopefully no one's going to ask you to do a problem like this. Now, um, to verify that at least this calculation agrees with the simulation, um, I'm just going to run the simulation. I, I set it up so we got almost a 30 degree deflection just so you can see uh, that these numbers appear. So let's see if I can pop that up immediately. Uh, are, is that going to work? I think it is. So uh, the masses are 2, the initial velocity is 4, and I've set this up so the target is going to deflect almost exactly at 30 degrees. So let's run it and see what happens. All right, so there's our deflection angle, 30 degrees, and the shooter's velocity, this is after the collision, so here it is, is 2, as advertised, and the target's velocity is about 3.46 after. Now, of course, remember, this thing isn't doing real physics, right? It's basically doing expressing the math that I just did but of course the, I didn't write this software so I have no idea how they how their math works it's way more complicated than mine I'm sure but, so, but at least you can see that there is some agreement in the theory anyway as to uh, this happening and otherwise you're reduced to doing experiments ooh so you'd have to take some video of some pool balls and uh, use some, there's all kinds of software out there that will let you take video and analyze velocities and stuff. And then you can see uh, this happening. Well, I hope uh, that helps you. Uh, actually, I really hope you never have to uh, do a problem like this. Uh, so if you, uh, thank you for watching. And if you want to look at more physics videos, uh, then please go to youcanlearnthis.com. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Remember, if you want to say thanks, then go to youcanlearnthis.com and buy me a coffee. See you next time.